Hi and welcome to a new video. This week I'm doing something a little bit different as promised in last week's vlog. I'm doing a Q&A to celebrate reaching 500 plus subscribers on the channel. So again, thank you so much for subscribing, watching, commenting. I do appreciate your support. Um, and I thought, well, I answered some of the questions that were sent that I would also draw a couple pages in my sketchbook. So I didn't receive a ton of questions, but I'll start with the questions you asked. And then I have a few additional questions that I thought might be interesting for a Q&A. So first, I got a question from Maryam Bazad. Sorry if I said your last name wrong, I apologize. Maybe I'll just stick with first names. <laughs> um, so Maryam, hi. Um, and you asked a couple questions. First, you wanted to know what motivated you to follow your dream, which seems to be a difficult decision to make. So my motivation came a year ago, I turned 50, which <laughs> still seems kind of crazy to think about because I don't really feel like I'm 50. And that was kind of a turning point because I felt like, well, if I'm going to follow my dream of becoming a full-time artist, it's kind of now or never, right? So that's kind of the main trigger to me deciding to go for my art, or to take my art to the next level. And that's kind of the combination of three, maybe even five years of changes in my life, which kind of brought me to a point where I also felt like it wasn't even a choice. It was just, um, if I really want to be myself fully, then that's just, that's the only path. So yeah, I'm really happy I decided to invest my energy fully into pursuing my dream. And yeah. Then you also asked, since when did you start to paint? And was it since childhood? So painting is actually a very recent thing. I mean, I've played with paint. Uh, before here and there but I've experimented with it a lot more in the last few months and kind of taken it to a new level by studying color more so I have a I'm starting to have a better understanding on how color uh, works and how that affects how to paint I'm still really at the beginning stages of painting and that because that's not really my main uh, medium I've been drawing a lot more so I started drawing in pen, I think it was around 2015 or so, so not quite 10 years. However, as a child, I was very creative, but just not invested in drawing or painting particularly. I spent more time invested in music growing up, playing a few instruments and being in a choir. As a teenager, then I did a lot of different things like um, photography, a little bit of dance, and then uh, theater. Also in college I did some theater. And then it's not until my 30s I kind of reconnected with art through collage art. And then, like I said, like around 2015 I started drawing, doing some line drawing and things. Um, I did a video on my art journey, which uh, I'll put in the description below if you want to the full more detailed journey of my uh, art. Then I got a question from Christina. Hi, Christina. And you ask, does your life in France influence your art? So the quick answer to that would be no, I don't think France or having lived in France is influencing my art very much anymore. I haven't lived in France in uh, let's see, almost 25 years. I, grew, I was born in France, I grew up there. And then I, after college, I went to England, then I lived in Italy, and then I moved here almost 19 years ago now. So the French culture will always be a part of me. Um, but having lived in the US for so many years and I don't really go back to France very often um, that I don't think it's inf influencing my art uh, at the moment maybe subconsciously but probably not consciously 
Jamie asked, uh, what is your artistic education? So I did not go to art school. I'm a self-taught artist. Um, so basically just learning by doing. I've taken some classes here and there uh, online. And also I took a few classes here at the local art school. Uh, Mayad Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design. That was actually a long time ago already, over 10 years ago. And yeah, but mainly just experimenting, a few classes online. So I don't have any formal art education. Do you listen to music or have other type of background noise while you make art or do you prefer silence? I usually listen to something, um, either it's my playlist on uh, Spotify or I like to listen to interviews on uh, YouTube or if not, I'll listen to a podcast, like for instance, I like to listen to a creative pep talk. I don't listen to every single episode, but that's a fun one to listen to. Yeah, otherwise music. What other interests do you have? Well, actually, it's funny because this question made me realize that um, I've been so invested in, you know, the YouTube channel and just the my art journey, in the, especially in the last six months, that uh, I haven't really done anything else. Before that, I would read a lot, uh, mainly nonfiction books and a lot of them on the subject of spirituality, metaphysics, also some philosophy. Um, I also am very interested in like tarot and oracle decks. So I was, I actually made an oracle deck a few a couple years ago, which I'd like to revisit and do a new version, but that's going to be a big project. So maybe we'll see if I can do that maybe later this year or next year. Yeah, so lately, I mean, uh, I don't really have anything else going on because it's just, since I still have my full-time job, uh, all my other, any time off I have, it's I just invest everything in uh, making YouTube videos and shorts and and just making art and practicing and just, you know, being on that journey, which is great. So next question, how do you deal with your critical voice? So that's something I actually learned in therapy a few years ago. I used to have a very, very loud critical voice and now, well, it's there once in a while, but it's really not that bad because the way it works is you can imagine your critical voice as an unwanted guest in your house. And then you have a choice. You have, are you going to let that unwanted guest into your space? Or are you just going to, yeah, you want to acknowledge they're there, but not interact with them. So that's what I do. If I hear my critical voice, I'll, I'd say 80%, 90% of the time now, I'll just be like, well, thank you. Thank you for your input. But no, thank you. <laughs> like, I don't engage with it. I think that's how I'm, that's what I'm trying to explain. If you don't engage with it, then it becomes more and more quiet, if that makes sense. I think now I have more difficulty trying not to compare myself with others. And that's kind of a different issue. Comparing myself to others can make me feel discouraged sometimes. So, and that's a hard thing not to do because obviously I'm on social media a lot and I see other artists' journeys. And it kind of made me realize recently that maybe I'm even more at the beginning of my journey than I thought. And that's all right. It felt disappointing at first, but now I've realized, well, that's just what it is now. But that's okay because I'm going to invest the time and energy to grow on my journey and things are going to evolve and um, it's going to be my own journey so it's going to be at my own pace. Yeah, the critical voice thing isn't really that bad. It's more the comparing to others that's harder to deal with. Next question. What are you reading right now? So as I was saying earlier, I haven't done a lot of reading lately, uh, but I did start to read 
The Hidden Life of Trees by Peter Wallenben. I don't know, I don't know if I'm saying that name right. Um, it's a really interesting book. It's on how trees communicate what they feel. And it's all about the world of trees, which I think is fascinating. Talking about trees, another question is, uh, what inspires you? So nature has always been a huge source of inspiration for me because I feel very connected to nature. And so yeah, plants, as you know, I have a lot of plants in my house, but also I'm lucky to live in a neighborhood that is very green and close to a few parks and not too far from the lakefront. So I get to have the opportunity to immerse myself in nature, you know, when the weather permits. And I've always felt like nature has a sacredness about it and there is so much you can learn from nature the rhythm of the seasons and how the flora and fauna interacts and communicates with each other it's always been fascinating to me and of course the beauty of nature so that's my main source of inspiration really and as you've noticed that's really i've been drawing a lot of botanicals will keep doing so. Uh, I'd like to introduce more animals in my work, as you see on this sketchbook page. Um, yeah. The next question is, what is the most challenging part about having a YouTube channel and being on YouTube? So I would say the most challenging part about having a YouTube channel is knowing what goes into it, because there's a lot of moving parts that if you're watching YouTube videos, you don't really realize uh, because, of course, you have to film the video, edit the video, look for music if that applies to your video, which for me, that's kind of the most challenging part is getting the right music for my videos. That always takes me the longest time when I edit them. But then you also have to think about thumbnails and description and all these little details that will you know influence the algorithm so there's that whole there's a creative side which is really fun and then there's like the more tacky side which is a little less fun for me and then always trying to keep up with any new thing that might influence how your videos are seen by the public yeah i mean i'm really happy i started that journey on youtube i feel like it's gonna be a great investment for me for the future I love that being on YouTube is allowing me to create a new community of like-minded people and uh, making connections. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's not an easy journey, but definitely worth it. And the last question is, do you participate in art shows? So I've done a few, a couple art shows in the past. Well, one of them was more of a craft show because I used to do some more crafty things. Um, and I did an art show last time, was in 2018, I want to say. I feel it's always a good experience and you can meet other artists in your community. I don't know that I would do any art shows this year because it's a big investment financially. And also it takes a huge amount of preparation, which in the end is not always worth it. Also because sometimes uh, you're being charged a lot of money to have a booth or a table. So it's not always worth it. At least that's my opinion. So no, in the immediate future, I don't foresee on having any art shows. I do have a small sticker shop online that I just opened a couple months ago. And uh, so I'll be working more on that in the coming months. So that's all the questions and answers I had for this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, also watching me drawing a couple pages in my sketchbook. So thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, comment. If you have any more questions, put them in the comment and I'll have another Q&A when the channel reaches 1,000 subscribers, let's say. <laughs> so yeah, thanks again so much for watching. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next week for a new vlog.
Bye. Thank you.